opportunity to speak to you all um, and, and being part of something that's special and, uh, and your story too and, and us getting together uh, is not an accident and um, Nikki when you say you know a, a great man of God seven months ago I would have never ever envisioned being introduced that way and uh, so uh, thank you thank you for that and I want to uh, I want to thank my my family that came from Denver Colorado to uh, to be here not to just support me and listen to me but to support uh, what Netta and all of us are here for too so thank you for making the trip and taking your time now my my lovely wife Kara and uh, my great friend of 25 years Jamie and uh, my mother-in-law Renee uh, thank you also for for taking the time so I've Let's say, you know, I, I want to explain a little bit of me professionally. I want to explain a little bit of me personally. And then also, sorry, and also um, how I found Jesus Christ and he became my Lord and Savior. And, you know, it, it starts professionally. So, you know, I've had the opportunity and the privilege to travel the United States and have you know, motivational talks and, and sales talks and, and get people fired up. Uh, how to sell better, and and that all went great, and I and I love that, and I didn't realize that I became addicted to that, and what I became addicted to was was me. I loved me some me, <laughs> right? And uh, and I fueled off of that, and if you couldn't benefit me, then you know I'd put a, I'd put a fake smile on, but if you didn't benefit me then I didn't want anything to do with you. You know, I, I wouldn't be here, you know? Uh, so I, I lived that way for a long time. And I, um, I didn't realize that I was living that way. And so to tell you a little bit about how I grew up, I grew up in a loving home. Uh, we were poor to start out. And by the time I left, uh, me and my family had done well for themselves. and but. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I saw my dad standing up like this in front of people, and, uh, and I would try to emulate him. You know, he was a high-powered executive that he raised up to, and I, and I loved that. I was like, man, I, I, I want to impress my dad. I want to be like that. And I did. I did turn into that, and, uh, and I, was, I was fortunate. What I realized, you know, from that is, um, you know, well, let me, let me, go back a little bit further. So I did that, but then as I grew up, you know, I met my high school sweetheart, who's my wife today. And, you know, we go through the process, you know, we end up, you know, getting married and then we have kids and, you know, things are going through that process. And, uh, you know, I look to her and I say, you know, you know, this thing that they talk about, you know, us, you know, having God in our family, maybe we should probably try to do that. And she says, yeah, my wife has always been a woman of faith. And so we start going to church and we go to churches together. And I said, no, no, I don't like that church. I don't like that church. Um, then what we started to do was go to separate churches and then we would worship in different churches. I wanted to worship my way, you know, and then, hey, hey, honey, go worship your way. And uh, obviously that didn't work. So uh, I... I have a friend in recovery that's uh, been in recovery for five years, and uh, most people and some of our close friends don't know that I've been a guest at some of those meetings and uh, celebrating what they call a birthday of sobriety, and I've uh, been a guest and I've been able to talk to them, and at the same time I'm talking to these people and I'm just looking like, man, at least I don't have those issues, right? One day she invites me to come to church with her. And I, I don't know why she felt to call me and go to church with her, but um, I already had all my excuses lined up. And those excuses, uh, my wife happened to be out of town, so I had that, and I had two kids, so I already had that lined up. And so she had already had um, the defense to my excuses prepared. You know, there's already, you know, there's, there's uh, sitters there that can watch your kids, you know, come to church with me. So I did. And I sat there and I got in church and they're playing this, Christian alternative rock music, like, awesome, great. 
pastor comes up and uh, he starts talking and he's, he's speaking differently than I've ever heard. He, he's talking, he's preaching the gospel, he's tucking his opinion out of everything. And um, I remember going back to my wife and, and saying, you know, I, you know, I think this guy that was talking is a little bit different and I think we should go check him out. Life says, of course, yeah, I'd love to. So we go to church a week or two after. She says, I really like it. And I say, yeah, it's pretty cool. Mine is that like Christian white, you know, rock music that they're playing. I said, I like the pastor um, from Denver, Colorado. And I'm a diehard Broncos fan. I end up running into my pastor at a Broncos game. And uh, we take pictures together and we exchange information. I thought it was cool. I'm like, okay, the pastor's a Broncos fan now. Okay, all right, we're on to something. And so um, he, I text him later on for some reason. I'm just like, you know, hey, I, you know, I want to get together with you. I want to get together with you. And uh, you know, he says, okay. And he, he asked me when we're sitting down, we're having a breakfast. He's like, so when have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And I'm like, why is that? He won't ask me that. I don't know. I, I believe in the Lord. But, you know, anyways, let's get back to, like, talking about Broncos football. You know, I, I'm, I'm that's not what I wanted to invite you out for. So Broncos end up making it to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 50. And I am pumped up about this. I'm fired up. If you don't follow football, two years before that, the Broncos went to Super Bowl 48. To get to the Super Bowl is very expensive. I talked to my pastor. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to the Super Bowl. He's like, are you going? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going. And, um, but the tickets are expensive. Um, and I just went two years ago, so I gotta find a deal. My pastor says, okay, well, I'll help you see if I can find you a deal. Uh, he looks into some resources. I end up finding a better deal. I book everything. Cool, I'm going. Two Super Bowls in three years, this is awesome. What wasn't awesome is my wife. And uh, you know, God bless her, she's not telling me not to go. But, she had just started a business and went out on her own and we had put some money to that. The timing to spend that type of money again two years later just seemed unreasonable. And so she wasn't telling me to not go, but everything, you know, her presence was like, just don't do it. So I called my pastor and I'm like, pastor, gosh, I know she doesn't want me to go. She doesn't want me to go, but I have everything booked. It's paid for, let's do this. And he says, Justin, if you honor your wife, God will honor you. Like, Pastor, I knew you were gonna say that, okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I sit in my study and I really start crying like a baby because I know what the decision is. I cancel everything. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm sobbing over this. Like, I'm missing the Super Bowl. Biggest fan. 12 hours the next day. It's about 9 o'clock at night. The next day, I get a phone call. And uh, somebody that is has no relationship to my pastor calls and says, hey, going to the Super Bowl? Going, getting on a plane, right? No. Not going. What do you mean you're not going? You're the biggest Broncos fan. <sighs> Timing's bad right now. Um, yeah. My wife just started a business, and we had to put some money aside and to do this twice in three years. It just doesn't make sense. And the person says to me and says, Justin, is, it, is that what it's about? I said, yeah, that's what it's about. And he says, well, do me a favor. He said, you know what? Get that Super Bowl ticket and then send me a bill. Couldn't believe what just happened. So I called my pastor. And I'm like, Pastor, you won't believe what just happened to me. I was like, I canceled everything. And then all of a sudden, this person that is unrelated to you or you have no idea who it is calls me. And now I'm going to the Super Bowl for free. From that moment, I said, okay, now I, now I need to start digging into this a little bit deeper because that's, that's, that's a little bit more than a coincidence. So I start going to church a little more regularly to see, you know, it, it, you know that it wasn't a magic trick or anything like that and uh, I see my wife's faith just really just start skyrocketing right and um, I'm inspired by it I'm also jealous by it because I don't have that I don't have that and I become envious of it 
And so I remember one night coming home and I was, I was a little liquored up and my wife is sitting there and she has a stumble in the room and she says, you know, Justin, I just, just kind of want to live more of a righteous life. And I looked at her and I started laughing. And I said, who are you? You want to come here? You want to act all high and mighty now? You, want to, you know what? You need a godly man. I'm clearly not that. So you go find yourself a godly man. Never, ever fathoming that I could be that person to her. Next day, my daughter comes in the room. Hey, Mom and Dad, we're going to church? I said, no, baby, we're not going to church. And my the little daughter, she's five years old, ran off and she was crying. And uh, that stuck with me. <sighs> April 16th, 2017, Easter Sunday. It's another day at church for me. See, I was used to compartmentalizing God. Like when I really needed him, it was like, all right, Lord, come on and he just step in. And then when I don't, all right, good, I'm going to put you back in this box. I'll keep you there. And then Justin's going to keep on running this. Okay? April 16th was different. I was not in control. Go Easter Sunday, um, as we were going to church more regularly, and uh, the pastor's talking. And uh, I remember him saying something, and it was almost as if everybody was eliminated from the room, and he was looking right at me. And he said, you know what, I sit up here and I preach every Sunday, twice a Sunday, on a Saturday. He's like, if you can remember one thing, remember this, you know, Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, and you're forgiven, and he's risen again. And all of a sudden, just it's just coming at me. And as it's been asked many times, you know, in a congregation, if you've gone to church, they asked for you to stand up and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that time was different because I wasn't in control. It wasn't like I looked at my wife like, hey, you can stand up with me. Or I looked around like, is everybody going to kind of do this? It was automatic. If chains were on my hands, I would have ripped right through them. Or the Lord would have. He called on me. And so now I'm standing up. And I'm looking at everybody. And I'm like, oh, and I see the other, like, five people. I'm like, oh, that's nice. That's, oh, this is great. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. And all of a sudden, I start crying. And then I, like, start weeping. And then I remember telling myself, really no idea what's happening to me. And I tell myself, Justin, you're this six-foot-six black man in here. Knock it off. <laughs> Knock it off. And the more I told myself that, I started crying even more. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, Justin, you are being a complete candy ass right now. Stop. <laughs> so we have to go pick up our children from Sunday school. And my children, I don't think, have ever seen me cry. So I'm like kind of hiding behind my jacket and my wife so they don't see me cry. The only, I think the only time they see me cry but don't remember is when they were born. And we walk out. My pastor sees me and sees that I'm visibly, visibly take it back. And he prays over me, and uh, then now I'm like crying even more. Like, and to a point now where I can't even speak. And all I could do is after my pastor was done praying over me, I just kind of muttered, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I continue to cry on the way home, and finally my daughter sees that I'm upset. I wasn't upset because she sees that I'm visibly crying. And I said, Daddy, why are you crying? Still cannot speak. And my wife says, you know, honey, your daddy let Jesus Christ into his heart. And I cried probably for another hour. I sat on a porch really just trying to grab everything and just not understanding that I was not in control. So my pastor reached out to me later and said, uh, Justin, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And I responded through text one word, I said, forgiven. And um, I travel a lot. I travel a lot and I carry suitcases and bags all through the airplane, the airports, and uh, it gets heavy. And uh, when you get those, like, you know those little 
conveyor belts. I don't know what they call them, the conveyor belts that you can just like hop on for a second and like drop your bags. It was like, I was it kind of I felt that way. It was just like a release, but that release just didn't come back. It was gone. It was gone. May 7th, I was baptized and as Christian said, born again, five months today. And, uh, and afterwards, I look back, look back and start asking myself questions. You know, I'm just like, oh, Lord, how in the way, by the way, my wife and I have been together 16 years and I look back and I'm like, goodness gracious, how could she have stayed with such a egotistical, arrogant schmuck? <laughs> yeah. And the Lord said to me, because she loves you. And that's the way I feel about you. My life has never been the same. My good friend Jamie, last night, was sitting at a restaurant and she asked me a question. And she says, you know, since you've found your faith and you're walking with the Lord, Justin, what has changed? Not asking me the question like she hasn't seen it change. Out of curiosity, what has changed? And uh, a story that comes to mind of what has changed is I had a cousin of mine who stole a lot of money from me about 10 years ago. And in my mind, I couldn't wait for the opportunity to see him face to face again. And I told myself, hey, if I ever had a chance to see him and my family not be around, it was over. And I was going to find a way to make him pay for what he did for me, or to me. I put my grandfather to rest in April in Kingston, Jamaica, and our family's all out there. And uh, I coerced a plan to get him by himself with me. And I, I was stoked. I was like, man, it is on now. This is the moment I've been waiting for. For 10 years, you and I, and the fact we're in Kingston, nobody's really gonna miss you. <laughs> I remember he comes up to the gate of my grandfather's house, and I'm like, I'm like sitting there, like you know, these UFC wrestlers, like before they're getting ready, just like, oh gosh, unleash this gate. And right when the gate opens, I walk up to him, and Lord said, huh, oh, forgive him. That's what's changed. That's what's changed. Which changes why I'm here tonight. Because when I met Netta, I asked her the question when I saw so passionately, and I hope you felt that tonight, of how passionate that she is. And I support you 100%. And the question that I asked that I've never asked before is what can I do to help? And that's why I'm here. And so yes, I hope that we all do that and take from this is because we can and we have the ability to help, you know, because we've got an amazing Lord, an amazing Savior that these are not, this is not a coincidence. This is not accident. So thank you for the opportunity to share my story about how I love Jesus Christ. And, um, and I'm honored to just really be here in your presence and support an incredible organization. Thank you all. Thank you.